how's it going? Welcome to Thursday night stream. I started a little bit later than I have on previous Thursdays, but that's because I was feeling antisocial today. That's all right. Um, so I've done a little bit of work on the straps already today, and I have some progress to show you guys, but it's nothing too groundbreaking. It's pretty much just like putting another finish on. And my chat is like, I'm gonna refresh my chat. I think I don't have the right. Give me just a second, guys, so I can see what you're saying. Oh, there we are, okay. I had like last night's chat popped out. I thought it would just refresh, but apparently not. Now I can see all of your lovely words. <laughs> Let's get that loading. Um, meanwhile, uh, thanks to Minion of Onion for following, as well as Pale Envol, or Palinvol maybe, in Butterscotch Paradox, who also followed earlier today. All right, I think the chat is going. If you guys are talking. <laughs> oh, I need that. Okay, yes, now I can absolutely see comments. Cool, well, awesome. Um, yeah, so this is the work that I did yesterday. Or no, not yesterday, just earlier today. Which is that I had been spending time um, dyeing the straps and doing the edging before. All of the edging came out really nicely, I think. And so earlier today, I took some time and I buffed it with a paper towel, which is pretty much just rubbing off any sort of excess dye that are um, that is sitting up on like on the surface of the leather. So after it get but it gets after buffing it out, I then uh, applied a top coat to it, which was what I ended up using was tan coat, which is the stuff that I said I had never used before. I tried this uh, compared to a few other things, and this was my favorite. I think that it sort of weirdly lightened the color of my straps a little bit, but they still look good on camera. They still look really dark on camera. Um, and I like them just fine. I think this is a good shade. So yeah, that's pretty much it for these. They are gonna hang out now until I'm ready to start assembling the rest of everything. Oh, thanks Tiny Bear, saying that the color came up better than they thought. Yeah, it's kind of um, got like this texture to it a little bit. Like, one of the beautiful things about the dye is that it has sort of some natural variations in it. Hopefully you can actually see what I'm talking about in here. Um, but it has like a sort of a modeled texture based on just like the, the natural features of the leather. And I think it looks really beautiful and that's why I wanted to use a, a leather dye, a real leather and real leather dye. Because uh, I just think it looks really nice and beautiful. Yeah, I think that the settings are still a little bit, like the two different cameras are both set to like auto white balance, I think, but they just kind of both do their own thing and also auto brightness. And I think that this camera has a tendency to be, the overhead camera has a tendency to be darker, um, but you know, eh, whatever. <laughs> Sorry guys, hopefully you can still see everything that I'm doing. I have my little coffee can, not can, glass. Um, and so what I have to work on today is pretty much like making the rest of the pieces. This was um, one of my pattern pieces that I took off the harness that I bought. This is what I'm making. I had mentioned in my last stream that I was having a lot of trouble with a new tool that I bought, which was this oblong um, hole punch. Yeah, that's, that's basically what it is. It cuts slits in the leather and so that's what it's like automatically doing that. Now I have two of these. One of them is... Um, this is supposed to be the fancy version. This one was like $30 at the Elite discount. And this one is only like $15. And this one works a million times better than the expensive one. And I'm really disappointed with it. Because um, I tried sharpening this. I sharpened this so much today and had a lot of issues with it where it just wasn't, uh, like it would go dull immediately. And I looked up a couple different things. I looked up some videos and I looked up, um, I found a forum post where a bunch of people were talking about this particular type of tool and this brand and basically found a bunch of other people all having the exact same problem as me. Because I wondered if it was my fault. I was like, am I sharpening this wrong? Am I doing something wrong? But as it turns out, this tool just sucks. And it's been documented on the internet. Um, let me check these notifications that I'm getting. Oh, just nice people saying that they like my tweets. Um, so I've gotten to a point where I've punched two holes successfully, but that was with much 
frustration because I've, like every single hole that I've tried to punch, this one's like halfway through and not quite all the way there, has just um, been torturous. So, um, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I'm going to definitely be using this one for the next set, but they don't look like they line up perfectly either. Well, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe I should just go ahead and punch it with the, the other one anyway. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Even if I know that the holes are secretly not 100% even, um, you know, I need this to actually cut through. So let's just try that. <laughs> just Call Me Nil says that they're watching both my stream and Jared's stream simultaneously while we are streaming from the same house. Yeah, that's probably not something that happens too often. Yeah, and that cut through like immediately. That was perfect. And this one has been like such a pain in the ass. Like I'm hitting it so loudly. Jared and his stream, I think he was streaming earlier. They like heard me pounding on things and grinding things and trying to sharpen this. And it was so bad that they were like, what the hell is she doing down there? <laughs> um, so don't buy that expensive version of the tool. That's a huge waste of your money. Buy these little cheap ones and then just replace them when they go bad because there's really no incentive to do it the other way. I thought, you know, after I had had success buying some of the nicer tool sets, like those that nicer beveler that I got, I thought, um, oh, you know, maybe it's time for me to finally invest in getting like the higher quality version of everything. But that was not the case for this particular tool. It still needs more water. I'll put some water in the back. Winged Coven so that they're watching while they sculpt. That's pretty cool. I like to hear that other people are making art wherever they are. Um, Pastel Galaxies is asking if I can return this tool. I don't know if I can or not. I thought about trying to. Um, I don't know if I kept the packaging. <laughs> it might be around or it might be easy to get, um, but I think I put it in the trash can. So uh, I thought about taking it back as well because um, you know, it's not doing the job that I paid for it to do. But on the other hand, I did also sharpen it. I've technically like altered it and stuff. I've been trying to work to make it work and it didn't didn't work. So maybe they'll maybe they'll give me a break or something. I don't know. But I actually forgot that I already had the cheaper version of this tool and so it just worked out. And yeah, that hole looks basically identical. Like I might know that it's maybe like a millimeter like shorter and wider or something. Uh, it's not super consistent looking, but I think it's fine. All right, now as I recall, these are supposed to like form an X on this piece. It might be the other way around. No. Yes. So this one holds the belts that go around the thigh. I don't remember if they're on the inside or the outside. Anyway, this is the piece that goes on the outside of the thigh, and that's what it's for. Yeah, I just don't know what Tandy's policies are. Thankfully, I've never had to return anything to them. Um, you know, I've always gotten good products from them. Um, it's weird to me that I did find other people talking about this problem, like it is something that is just like, like the product itself is just no good because I feel like that would be addressed at some point if a lot of people were having the same issue. Um, but yeah, this, like it just won't hold an edge. It was super blunt when I got it. It was like a rounded edge and it was basically just like working like a stamp. Like it was making an impression, but nowhere even near cutting through. Um, so yeah, that was my frustration of the day, but luckily I think I got my solution already. So here's one of them. I just I just got it wet and kind of curved it a little bit. That's not nothing too intense there, but just so that it doesn't um, like these are kind of kind of bent up a little bit, and so I'm just trying to shape them a little bit in preparation for sinking it against my thigh and making it stay there. Um, so I've got three more of these to punch at least for right now, and then a couple other small pieces to work on. So that's what I'm just going to be focusing on for tonight. 
Uh, yeah, Anna is saying that the metal must be too soft for its purpose. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you're right. Now, the reason why these, there's like the pro craft tools versus like the cheaper craft tools, because these are the same brand and the same product. Um, and this is supposed to be made out of a better metal, but if it's not cutting at all, then it's not worth my time or my effort. Wash Bear is asking me what I play in my uh, D&D game that Holly DMs and uh, would I ever cosplay as my D&D character. Uh, maybe. My character is a rogue. Um, not a rogue. Why did I say that? A ranger. I'm a ranger, a beast master, and so I have a familiar. And the reason why I wanted a familiar is because I wanted to like bring Ares into the game with me. And so even though I don't have a cat familiar, I actually have a pseudo dragon familiar. And so in my in my um, D and D self insert, I guess my cat is a, a dragon. But um, I, I don't know if I would cosplay that character yet, just because I don't. Like, we've only played a couple of times. It's really hard to get the group together because everyone is super busy and always, like, everyone's doing internet stuff, pretty much everyone in that group, so everybody has a super busy schedule. And, um, so I haven't gotten to, like, really flesh out that character and find out exactly, like, what kind of person she is yet. I have some ideas, and I've been enjoying myself in the games, but, um... I still feel like there's a lot of room there for like kind of growing in and seeing what feels natural while the game is progressing. And so I haven't had a great chance to do that yet. But yeah, in the future I would like to keep this character. This leather is also just really dry and not, not cutting super easily, but it is cutting, so yay. Um, yes, thank you everyone for the tap tap in the chat. Oh, so cute. Um, yeah, I would definitely be open to cosplaying that character at some point, but not yet. Maybe once I get to a point where I feel like I really know who my character is. Uh, yeah, Cactus Wolf is saying that a lot of the tools that she buys from Tandy are dull. I remember you saying that, so I was like, well, I guess I need to sharpen this for real. And honestly, it, this one was really dull looking, compared to other tools that I bought that have been fine. And like, these come sharpened. They come sharpened and then they have like a wax coating on the end. You just peel off. But not only was this one like not sharpened, it wasn't even like remotely close to being usable. Um, it wasn't even just like a little bit dull, like there's just no way this was going to cut through everything. Uh, Euro Wizard is asking if I finished the Celica cosplay. No, I talked about that a little bit. Um, I have been enjoying my Celica cosplay stream, but I also feel... <laughs> Sorry. Like I... Uh... After missing my fanime deadline, I feel like I don't have anywhere in mind that I would actually want to wear that costume in the immediate future. Because my next conventions are AX, possibly San Diego Comic Con, and Dragon Con, which are three of the biggest, hottest, most crowded events that are going to be like the most uncomfortable for trying to wear that costume. Clav Noise, thanks for following. And so, um, also for at least... At least for Dragon Con, I won't have any kind of handler, I don't think. And I basically just realized that I didn't have anywhere on my schedule that I knew that I was going to wear her until TwitchCon. So now my plan is to finish that costume for TwitchCon and possibly enter it into the TwitchCon contest since we made it on stream. But we'll see how that goes a little bit closer to the con. But for the time being, I'm giving myself leeway to just work on stuff for Anime Expo, which is um, Attack on Titan. Um, I have played the game a little bit, but not as much as I want to, and so please no spoilers here. That was another reason with Celica that I felt like with everything I have going on right now, I don't really have time to get that far in the game and spend time with it, and it just wasn't appealing to me to only to, to cosplay from something that I haven't actually gotten to enjoy yet. So, we'll see.
Uh, Within One Tiger is laughing at the fact that cosplay handler is a thing, but yes, cosplay handler is the, the, the term for it that people use, and it's super necessary for a lot of my costumes. I sharpened this one too, and maybe this leather is just like particularly tough. It is pretty dry, but I'm wetting it as I cut to make that less of a problem. Oh, that's cool. <clears throat> um, people in the chat talking about um, what else, the stuff they're working on right now. Someone's doing a, like their own like homebrew language for D&D &D campaign. That's pretty neat. There we go. <laughs> Anna said they were a handler. She was handler for three friends who were all wearing dinosaur suits. Sounds like a lot of work. Because they all have tiny little arms so they can't feed themselves or open doors for themselves. That's cool. Winged Coven says that them, uh, their husband and I are at the beginning stages of making an MMORPG. That's really awesome to like create your own world. I love how many different nerdy creative things you guys are up to. This is a very diverse group. <laughs> anyway. So we've got two more of these things, and these are the thigh pads, for lack of a better term. And then after that, we have a couple of these weird things to make, and this, like, house piece. <laughs> That's what it was called in one of the, um, the videos I watched that was about, like, how to, put the how to put the harness on. I had to watch a video on how to wear this harness when I first got it. It was 20 minutes long, and the entire video was out of focus, and I was just like, what the hell? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I did eventually figure out how to put the harness on. But I thought it was cute that she referred to that piece as the house piece. What? Roman Noodles is working on an Evelyn cosplay? You mean like from uh, Dice Camera Action? I'm sure that Anna will be so excited to hear that if she doesn't know already. That's so awesome. Oh, I'm using the craft room is doing a mermaid tail for Dragon Con. That sounds cool. <laughs> Mops ENT EMT says that they can hear me cutting leather all the way over in Jared's stream. So Jared upstairs playing his video games. Or no, he's not playing games, he's editing. Anyway, you can hear my tapping getting picked up in his microphone upstairs. Sorry about that. Sorry, Jared. Tanyu, Chai is saying that they see enough pieces for three. Um, these are different things. So these, each each harness will need two of these. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess that's what, um, so if you're referring to like these brown ones that are already done, these are like the crappy, um, cheap ones that I bought off of Amazon and I'm copying it into leather. So I am only make I'm making two copies, but this is the one that it's based off of. So this is not part of my final product. I'm just gonna have this as an extra, I guess, but, um, the leather work that I'm doing is enough for two. 
Roman noodles, you you totally got this. I'm really excited to see what you do for this the Evelyn costume because obviously I got to work a little bit on the the original one that Holly mostly made it, but I, I was there for a little bit and we made we did a lot of the work together as we were like sitting here together even though she was doing most of it. Um, so yeah. Awesome. Tiny Bear is asking me if I've ever watched uh, My Hero Academia. I have not, but so many people have sung the praises of this show that I know that I need to. Maybe after I'm done with my Attack on Titan phase. Just kidding, it's not a phase. I will Attack on Titan forever. So I think my goal for tonight is to do all of these little um, attachment pieces if I can, or as much of them as I possibly can, since my straps are ready to go. And then for Saturday's stream, is gonna I'm gonna try to do my assembly or the the majority of my assembly, depending on how far I get. Um, so that's the schedule that we're on. I'm also working on these jackets. Um, I didn't like plan far enough ahead. Surprise! I didn't plan far enough ahead for the con that's around the corner that I'm hoping to wear these to. Oops. So, um, I may or may, may not finish the jackets, as I was saying earlier. I don't know if that'll end up happening for Anime Expo or not, but I'm going to be working on them this week at the very least and start getting that whole thing underway. Everyone's talking about dice camera action here in the chat, which is the Dungeons and Dragons game that Jared plays online uh, once a week with the crew from, uh, let's see, Wizards of the Coast plus uh, Anna, Holly, and Nate wants to battle. That's what I was trying to say. I'm getting distracted by lining this up. But anyway, obviously I am partial to the show. Jared's on it. So I'm glad that some of you guys like it too. And yes, Dr. Cantrez is reminding everyone not to uh, spoil the recent events on the show because not everyone has a chance to watch live all the time. And that's a very good point. And that's true for pretty much whatever we're talking about, whether it's Dice camera action or Attack on Titan. We'll try to keep this with a spoiler, spoiler free space as much as possible. All right, so this is the last piece that are like these style. Oops. Photo taker, thanks for following. Is that Rudy, maybe? Hmm. Uh, Potion Seller is asking me for the white pants. Are they just off the rack? The white pants are jeggings. <laughs> That's my secret. Um, well, it's not a secret. For uh, the Attack on Titan costumes, I highly recommend getting yourself some jeggings because they look like leggings, only they're like soft fabric and stretchy and comfy. And um, they need to be really tight anyway uh, because that's the style and they've got all the straps over them. So, uh, yeah, I just got jeggings. <laughs> um, my jeggings came from Amazon Prime. Hello, photo taker. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for the follow. Also to 
1800 uh, 1 Chocoho. 1 800. Got it. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, jeggings are awesome. Jeggings are the best solution for Attack on Titan. I was not able to find male jeggings for Jared, so I ended up getting him like some stretch jeans that I think are gonna be tight. And if they're not, then I'm just gonna order him some lady jeggings and just whatever, he'll just have the right size. Uh, just Call Me Nil is asking, do I make my own patterns for my costumes or is there somewhere where people can look up anime character, anime character outfit patterns? Um, yes and yes. <laughs> I make a lot of my own patterns, but not all of them. And um, there's not like one single database of anime character sewing patterns, but there are lots and lots and lots of sources of people who are either individuals who make their own patterns and sell them, or certain sewing pattern companies like McCall's and Simplicity are starting to cater to cosplayers uh, in a certain way and like making outfits or making patterns that are designed specifically to fill cosplay needs like um you know sailor patterns or school uniform patterns um i don't think there's like an official tack on titan jacket pattern because the like the patterns started becoming more popular and common kind of after attack on titan got really popular let me just pause to hammer the crap out of this um so there are a variety of sources. I bought an Attack on Titan jacket pattern from um, some person that I found online and it's just like a, a downloadable PDF that you print out and you tape it together and then you have your pattern. So that's where mine came from, um, but a lot of, that's just to save myself some time. I frequently make my own patterns, especially for stuff that is like more complicated or more like closely fit, I guess. Um, yeah, but the jacket patterns are easy to find. All right, last one. I can stop hammering this really hard and making a ton of noise for now. Oh, Roman Noodle says that um, they're working on their, they have progress photos. That's fine. If you want to share a link to your Instagram, I see that you put your name up there, but um, one of the mods can assist you if you want to share like a particular photo so that we can take a look at it together. And that's perfectly okay. Made it all the way through. <laughs> um, Tanya Chai is saying that they bought their jacket pattern from Up Thread in Mind. Um, I tried looking for that one. It is no longer listed on Etsy, which is not surprising because Funimation sends um, cease and desist to anyone who has any sort of Attack on Titan product for sale. And, um, I found that same person on Tumblr and they had like abandoned their blog, there was nothing really there, and they had a link to a different store on Store Envy that was entirely defunct. So I tried my best to buy my pattern from that person and it was just not possible. Um, and I even asked some of my friends if they had the pattern um, and would send me a copy, which I would normally never do, but again, I literally could not give this person money. And um, never was able to get a response from them or anything like that, but I did find a different source for it, so I got my pattern, it'll be fine. Dr. Cantra says that they are ready to build their first leather belt after watching these streams, which is pretty awesome. Um, another thing that I bought at Tandy today were all of these little belt loops or belt keepers. Oh, Tanya Chai, that's kind of you. Um, yeah, if you want to send it to me, I'll compare it to the pattern that I have, but I did pay for one, and I norm again, I normally would, like, never be okay with any sort of, like, sharing of patterns, because I, I firmly believe in, like, paying people for their work, um, but, it, but I tried and I couldn't, so, yeah, I mean, if you want to send it to me, you can email it to me and I'll take a look at it, but I do have a pattern that I did pay for and that seems to be fine, so I don't think it's really that big of a deal. Alright. 
So I've got 10 of these little belt loops. There's, yeah, two per leg, two harnesses, so that's eight, plus one on the top front. There's like a weird little belt loop that's visible there. So I'm trying my best to replicate all of the details from the anime. I was watching the show last night. If you saw um, my drunk tweets, or Jared's drunk tweets as we were watching Attack on Titan together last night. And we drank like an entire two bottles of wine between us. So, you know, I'm glad we survived. <laughs> All right, so this was something that I had started. I did an exact trace of this piece and started putting holes in it. And they were, the holes from the oblong hole punch are much larger than the holes that were in this thing. And so they don't, um, there's not a sufficient room here for all of them. So what I need to do is this same piece over again that's just slightly larger to accommodate having more margins there. Potion Seller saying that they love my assessment of Levi. That I called him a little cat. He is a little cat. Well, thank you. I'm glad that my tweets were entertaining to someone. I was literally tweeting and I was just like, I'm gonna lose followers for this, but whatever. This is for me! <laughs> um. So I'm like looking in my scrap bin right now to see if I have anything that I can um, work with to make these smaller pieces. I mean, not really. I have... I just try to, like, reuse things whenever I can, but there's not a lot of good stuff in here, honestly. I should probably toss some of these scraps that are small. Athis Coden has made it back, saying good evening. Uh, that's cool. He made it of bracer, bracers and pauldrons. Um, yeah. Neat. Hello, lovely Liz. Welcome. Anna is asking if we only drink nice wine now that we live in California. No, we still drink really cheap wine. <laughs> All right. I need two different things at this point. I need two different leather hides of different sizes or different thicknesses. Um, the first one that I need is going to be this thinner leather to make two more of these. Because when I initially cut this out, I wasn't planning on making two harnesses, but uh, in a classic Heidi episode of um, Escalating Commitment, this went from being a purchased on Amazon Prime costume to now being like, oh, well, I guess I should make two harnesses and two jackets out of real leather. So, uh, yeah, I guess I just do this to myself. louder than I anticipated. Okay, and I'm ready to cut out of this piece. So I'm just gonna trace off of one of these guys. Just put them over there. <laughs> Everyone's talking about their favorite cheap wines now. I support this conversation. I'm trying to use my like already cut edges. No, I'm gonna leave a little gap there to um, cut down on the cutting time. 
should have phrased that better. Whatever. Loverly Liz is asking, would I say that I had a lot of art background before getting into cosplay? Yes. Um, I've been studying art for my whole life. I've always been a crappy person. Um, I have dabbled in so many different artistic pursuits uh, all over the place, really. Um, I was mostly involved in like painting. I was That was one of my, that was my original college majors that I was painting. Um, and I don't really do that anymore. Like I don't sit down and paint pictures. Uh, I do paint props, I paint, um, I paint leather, but I don't really, I'm not like a painter, um, which is fine, you know, you kind of discover what you really want to do as you get older and just experience things. So I ended up not really wanting to paint that much. <laughs> um, And I had, yeah, I had just done a lot of different artistic disciplines. Oops, and I'm dangerously close to spilling this water. I did music and stuff too. Um, photography, uh, theater arts, even though I'm not a performer, I was, that's what my degree is in. So I was around, I mean, that's just very all encompassing as far as like artistic pursuits go. This theater incorporates performance and um, other more traditional art styles as well for like all the theater tech um, everything that goes into the technical aspects of creating a theatrical performance that's what I'm trying to say link fan what don't need a hundred dollars why would you do that link fan <laughs> oh thank you so much that's very kind of you welcome to the stream today There's not even a note. You didn't even leave a note, Link fan. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Atheist Coden says, it's a call out post saying, Link fan, you're in like every stream that I ever visit. Yeah, this guy, he likes to spend his time in streams, I guess. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Link fan. Oh, he says that he gives Jared a lot at times and thought it was unfair. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much. It's not unfair for, obviously it's your money so you can do what you want with it, but I appreciate that you choose to spend it on all kinds of streamers. That's really, really rad of you to support people like that. So thanks. Everyone's still talking about wine in the chat. <laughs> I think that I'm finally ready to not see another bottle of wine for a while. <laughs> I had more than enough last night. We got some theater techs here in the chat. Shout out to the theater techies that are the underappreciated and unsung heroes of any theatrical performance. Did I just mess up my knife by, let's see. I think it's okay. This leather is just like so dry. It sounds like it's being like ripped through. I also think that my knife is not in great shape because um, it got kind of dragged over this rough metal edge. Uh, Lib Jumper, yeah, Lib Jumper Cosplay, thank you for following. Welcome to our stream tonight. Um, this is my third Attack on Titan Harness stream, I believe. Um, so in the previous streams, we made all of these straps, which is, this is 15, I think, different straps that are all just like uh, one inch strips. And um, it should be enough for two harnesses. Let's hope I didn't miscalculate that. And uh, we'll start assembling that on Saturday. But for right now, we're making all the little weird side pieces and pouches and stuff.
Okay, this is finally starting to cut all the way through. <laughs> Synchrophy says, shout out to the props department where their work can only be seen in like a tiny corner of the stage for like three seconds. Yes, yeah, sometimes that happens where you'll spend a lot of effort into one small detail that is uh, overlooked, I guess. But you also think about like the set design as a whole and the sound design, the lighting design, all of those things are done by different artists in collaboration to... Um, create this end product so I wouldn't say that their that their work is like unseen it's more just that the audience is always uh, more able to readily connect with the performers who are on stage right in front of them than to necessarily um, have the same amount of appreciation for the static or not necessarily static but the design elements of the, the show itself which, you know, for myself when I attend the theater, I'm always looking at the theater, the technical aspects of it, because that's where my training is. Um, so some of us are paying attention to that stuff and, and care about it, but the audience as a whole probably the, um, is more interested in the actors than the people who are behind the scenes. All right, finally got this thing free. Um, do I need to cut anything else? Not out of this piece. I think the other pieces that I need to cut are gonna be out of a different hive. All right, um. Knife might be fine. We'll see. I don't want to like mess with it. Oh no, the chat's getting dark. Everyone's talking about alcoholism now. Uh, I can promise you that drinking a whole bottle of wine is not normally how we spend our Wednesday nights. <laughs> but it was our anniversary, and so we decided to get crazy. Also, we were just making fun of Aaron Yeager the entire time. We were watching Attack on Titan again. We're just like doing a regular rewatch. Re so we're like in the middle of season one again right now. Where Aaron is just like the worst. <laughs> Dang. Finally. Um, if we have anybody here in the chat who's ever been to AX, I am happy to hear any sort of AX survival tips because this is going to be my first anime expo. And I'm a little bit nervous after hearing everything that people have said so far about how incredibly hot and uncomfortable and crowded and difficult the whole event is. Uh, I'm hoping that I end up, you know, still having a good experience. Unfortunately, well, maybe this is fortunate, I don't know, because of uh, just like how late in the year we finally confirmed our plans and how close we live to the convention center itself, we don't have any kind of hotel room on site, which is how I would normally do a con that big, but um, for the, like, the distance we would have had to go from a hotel room, we might as well just like do the con from home. And so that's what we are doing. I'm gonna change my blade because I'm getting really frustrated with this. Actually, instead of changing my blade, I'm gonna change my knife. Um, here we go. So, 
Yeah, we are just gonna be staying at home, no packing a big suitcase, no dragging myself down to a hotel anywhere. Uh, just gonna be getting dressed at home every day and then taking a lift over to the con center. So, no driving, no hotel room. And I'm wondering if that's going to make my life easier or harder. Because <laughs> with it being in a convention center, it's not like there's like a central party hotel that I know of. At least I don't think that's the case. This is my first AX, so I don't know. I don't know where the party is. Alright, I'm trying to round my corners off a little bit because that's how they're supposed to be, but I was using a ruler to get nice straight lines. Yeah, we live close enough that we're just going to Uber there. Um, we tried driving to a different con, uh, which was Stanley's Comic Con. It used to be Comic Kazi, but they changed the name, which is stupid because Comic Kazi was easy to remember and unique. And Stanley's Comic Con sounds really generic and boring <laughs> and forgettable. But whatever. Um, so we went to that one and we drove ourselves, which was a mistake because we ended up like parking blocks away in a not a great spot. Um, and we could have just gotten a, like an Uber or a Lyft. I don't actually use Uber because I don't like the company. I use Lyft all the time, but for whatever reason, it's like more natural for me to say Uber because I think it's like the more popular term to talk about like rideshare services. So whenever I say Uber, I don't actually literally mean Uber. I'm, I'm definitely not patronizing them <laughs> as a company. I'm using Lyft instead. It seems to be doing fine just now. Yeah, Uber is really popular. Well, Uber and Lyft and just like the ride service, ride share services in general are extremely popular out here in LA because traffic is so bad and a lot of people don't have cars because if you're like in a downtown area, you don't need one, but unless you're going somewhere else. So I think they're very much like a part of LA lifestyle. Before I moved here, we would only use them like on occasion to like get to the airport or something or if we were drinking really late at night one time we called a lift and we were like yeah we want you to take us to Burger King <laughs> and they he took us through the drive-thru we got our fries and our burgers potion seller asking if Jared and I are still house hunting uh, yes and no we're in limbo right now I haven't really talked about this on stream, but Jared has, so I'm sure some of you guys already know. Um, we were recently informed that the person who owns the house that we're renting wants to sell it and we can't buy it. So, uh, we it took us a while to come to that conclusion that we absolutely can't buy it, um, but now we're in a position of just waiting to find out who will buy it and whether or not they want to keep renting it because it's a really common thing in LA is that people will buy houses that are just investment properties and then um, you know they're just renting those houses to whoever wants to live there. Snuggle Guns donated 240. Let me let me read this message that you sent me. Let me make this really quick cut. I'll read your message and finish telling my story. Snuggle Gun says, ignore the weird amount. I'm polishing off a gift card. <laughs> That's fine. I know it's not much, but I figured every little bit helps. Your streams are a huge help, especially considering them working on my first musical as a costume slash makeup assistant. Love from Philly. Uh, signed, Ray. That is so kind of you, um, Snuggle Guns. No, oh, that's it's the thought that counts, and I, I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the weird amount, any amount is a good amount. So thank you so much for contributing and for the tip. Uh, Kremit... Kermit has followed, thank you so much. And yeah, thank you Snuggle Guns, and good luck on your um, your theatrical, you're working on a musical. Okay, so good luck on the musical and all of the costume and makeup work that you're gonna be doing. I hope that goes well, and uh, you guys break a leg. Yeah, um, okay, back to my story about, Oh, Pastel Galaxy is asking why we can't buy the house. We can't buy the house because it costs $1.2 million. <laughs> we don't have that money sitting around. And on, this is, 
If this house were in any other part of the country, it would not be a $1.2 million home. This is not like some, we don't live in like an extravagantly nice place or anything. We live in a house that, if this were in another state, would be way less than half of that price. Um, that said, yeah, we just, it would be unwise of us to even try to buy it at these crazy inflated prices. So, um, <laughs> We're waiting to find out who might buy the house and whether or not that would mean that we have to move or not, whether we might have the ability to stay. Um, and at that point, then we'll be searching for a house. So we are not like actively right at this moment searching for a house because we don't have those answers yet and we don't know that we for sure absolutely have to move. Um, and we're hoping for the best outcome, which is that someone wants to just rent it, someone buys it to continue renting to us. Which, like I said, is not unusual in LA, but it's also not in any way guaranteed. So that's where we're at right now. People are talking about what you can buy for $1.2 million that isn't a house in LA. <laughs> um, yeah, our house has like some desirable qualities like the fact that we're up on a hill. We're, we have a really nice view of the downtown area and um, you know people will pay for that. So that's why it costs a crazy amount. It's for those factors. It's not just like square footage or whatever. And honestly, this is kind of an older home. Like this home was built in like the 60s or 70s. It's not like super modern or fixed up or anything either. Like it's just, it's just a house. It's like a house that has like weird intercoms in it and like bad wallpaper in one of the rooms. It was just like painted over. Like, I mean, it's not that we live in some kind of, you know, bad place. Cause obviously this is nice enough and it's, and we've done a lot to make ourselves comfortable here, but in this market, it's $1.2 million and we don't have that money. I'm trying to peel this up and see where I need to cut it on the back side. Uh, Loverly Liz is asking, was moving to California intended to help advance your career, Jared's, or each of ours? Uh, kind of both, but we've been kind of asking ourselves, like, realistically whether or not that has happened. And I don't know. <laughs> I feel like being here has motivated me in some ways, but it's not like I'm, like, actively getting jobs where I'm going out to like a specific location or like, I'm not working in film or TV or anything like that. Um, you know, I'm not working in a studio with other people. I am still just sitting at home, which I could be doing in any state that I have my, like this is my work room and this is where I spend all my time. And I can do this whether we live in Los Angeles or Texas or somewhere else. Um, so right now we're not considering ever going back to Texas. Texas, Texas is kind of played out. Uh, I liked a lot of things about Texas, but I disliked a lot of things about Texas, and I'm just kind of done living there. So, um, we don't know exactly what will happen, but that's where we are right now. I think I cut these holes a little bit bigger. Oh, maybe not. It might be slightly bigger than some of the other ones I cut. Oh, Char is heading out. Good night, Char. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Yeah, I, I started a little bit later tonight, or I guess I started the same time I normally do on Wednesdays, but 
I was feeling sluggish, probably from drinking a shitload of wine last night. <laughs> so I just wanted to work off camera for a while and have a nice quiet space to myself. for my water. <sighs> Hi! Uh, Loverly Liz is asking, um, what's my advice about Texas and saying that sh she's moving from to from the Chicago area to Florida next month with the intention of moving to Texas in a couple of years. Uh, my advice about living in Texas is to choose one of the um, major cities <laughs> like Austin or Dallas are probably your best um, like the best environments to be in like for political reasons depending on what your politics are honestly but um, assuming you're not like you know racist and hate women <laughs> um, you might be better off in one of the more liberal cities because, yeah, I don't want to make this a political discussion, but there's a lot of stuff going on in Texas that is very frustrating. I'll just put it that way. I liked Texas for a lot of other reasons. Um, I was living in Dallas for almost my whole life. I got really comfortable there. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of resources and a lot of things available in terms of like major stores in the area. I, I know that sounds like shallow, but like, okay, obviously as a cosplayer, I'm concerned about making sure that I have resources. And um, so places like Tandy, places like Smooth On, they do not exist in every, Reynolds, which sells Smooth On products. Those places do not exist in many parts of the country or in other countries. And so like, in a lot of places in Texas, those stores don't exist and you have to travel several hours to get them. So Dallas is a place where a lot of things were available. Um, uh, I'm reading people talking about different parts of Dallas. Uh, Richardson is part of North Dallas, or it's, well, it's just north of North Dallas. Uh, I used to live there when I was attending UTD years ago. Um, I did not graduate from UTD, I graduated from UTA, but both of them are kind of in the same metroplex at least, maybe not the exact same area, but anyway. Dallas has had a lot to offer and I was happy there for a lot of reasons, but I was unhappy there for other reasons. And it's nice that we are, like for instance, I'm, I've been open about this, but I haven't really gone into that much detail, but I, um, I've talked about smoking weed before on my streams. And even though I sometimes say it like in a joking way, the truth is that I take mar medical marijuana on a daily basis for anxiety and for insomnia and things like that. And here in California, that's 100% legal. I have the ability to go to a weed store and buy whatever strain I desire based on its medical benefits, which are all documented and tracked and um, developed with these particular benefits in mind. So I can go in and be like, oh, I want my sleepy time weed, or I want this weed that is gonna help me be creative and relaxed. And um, so that's, it's literally medication to me and it's not just about getting fucked up or whatever. Um, Cause that's not really what happens either. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of really backwards misconceptions about weed in Texas. And um, with just like a conservative political climate, there's, it's literally illegal. And so I would be afraid constantly that I was going to become, or that I was gonna get in trouble legally just because I was, taking this substance to help myself. Um, so stuff like that <laughs> has been such a huge change in my life to go from a place where I'm constantly paranoid, where I'm having to deal with drug dealers just to get 
um, anything that I need, which like, that's just horrible. That's horrible. Um, there's all kinds of reasons why you don't want to do that. And now I'm here in California where I'm protected. It's safe. It's legal. It's, I know, I trust the quality of the product. Um, and it's literally changed my life to have legal, safe access to weed. So I'm a big, um, supporter of medical marijuana programs. And I think it's really sad and shameful that in 2017, there are not regulations in place to get this medication to people who will benefit from it across the, the country. That's like insane to me. Um, sorry, I'm not even reading the chat right now, but I will in a second. Um, and it has been like night and day in my life. Dr. Kantra says, it's kind of sad that Israel is the forefront of medical research on it and the U.S. is just barely becoming willing to research it. Yeah, I've read articles about how the weed that they're using in within the United States for their research is so low quality that it's like it barely even registers. Like, and so when you're using something that, it, that does not resemble in any way like the product that's actually available on the streets, then you're not getting good results. You're not getting accurate or useful results. Um, and so that's really frustrating that there's all kinds of like bureaucratic issues surrounding it that have nothing to do with the fact that it's a plant <laughs> that is grown to help people <laughs> and that has many helpful benefits. Um, and people treat it like it's some kind of horrifying substance. Wing Kevin says that they've never tried weed, but get this, my midwife actually offered me opioids for a migraine. How is that okay, but weed isn't when one in four people get addicted to opioids? Yeah. A lot of the prescription painkillers, pain opioids, yeah, it's literally like the same, derived from heroin, um, or derived from the same um, opioids as, yeah, heroin is also derived from opioids. So like Oxycontin, um, I forget exactly which ones, uh, are incredibly addictive and have all kinds of really horrible negative side effects. And they still call weed a gateway drug when it's like, has no addictive properties and um, is more likely to make you not need other substances, honestly. But it's a lot of it is just like political issues and a lot of it is um, misconceptions that have been like, Oh, what am I trying to say? Like politicians literally lying about it just to make their constituents happy kind of thing. Where there's a lot of misinformation and fear and lies that are being spread and recirculated solely because um, politicians are trying to appeal to either big pharmaceutical companies or people who have no experience with weed but somehow still blame it for all of the like problems in their communities. Anyway, I don't want this to all be an entire day of weed talk, but um, yeah, I just figured, you know, if, if I'm going to talk about how I enjoy smoking weed, I don't want to give the impression that I'm just doing that completely irresponsibly and with, you know, no, uh, like, regard for like whether or not I am an influence on other people because I don't want to be a bad influence on anybody who's younger and impressionable or whatever who might be watching these streams. But um, I am an advocate for a safe and helpful consumption of medicine, honestly, <laughs> that is not available to a lot of people for a lot of really dumb reasons. So there you go. Hi, Bunny Hoodie. Welcome to our conversation. We're talking about how I love weed. <laughs> uh, we're talking about the medical benefit, benefits of marijuana and things like that. Well, that's interesting. We Kevin said that, that she's in her second trimester of pregnancy and that was offered opioids currently pregnant. That's insane. 
I, I mean, I'm glad that you obviously are not comfortable with that. And, but like the thought of like how much more detrimental that could be to your health and also potentially your baby compared to weed. I don't, I'm not a doctor and I can't give you any real medical advice, but I did have a friend who was pregnant and their doctor told her, her doctor told her like, you, it's fine if you have a joint here and there or whatever, it's not going to hurt the baby. So, um, <laughs> that's, that's one professional opinion that is not, uh, not actually mine. <laughs> okay. Red Hat is back. Um, she had her interview yesterday and is getting another interview with them next week. That's cool. Uh, congratulations, Red Hat. I know that you were a little bit nervous about that yesterday, but it sounds like things went really well. Anna Petty is talking about um, working for a convention in a state where weed is not legal and talking about potentially providing weed to guests who need it, that would have been amazing. Um, I mean, I understand that you said that it's pro that's not something you can legally do because of, because of laws, <laughs> um, but that would have been amazing. I would have taken you up on that when I was at KitsuneCon. All right, we're on our last one of cutting out these super annoying little tiny slits. Um, we've been having a chill stream tonight. Uh, at the beginning, I updated everybody on how these straps were coming along, which the actual straps themselves are pretty much ready to start being cut to length and assembled. So I'm gonna do that on Saturday. But my goal for tonight is to get through as much of these like smaller attachment pieces as possible um, so that everything is 100% ready and dyed and like uh, ready to go, ready to get turned into a wearable harness. Thank you, Fluffy Shinigami. Oh, you're talking about Red Hat. But thank you. Good luck to, you know, congratulations also to Red Hat. Thank you to everyone in the chat who's interested in how this is shaping up. It's being one of my more spur of the moment projects, but I do want to continue having like a the constant work of having a regular costume like Celica, which, you know, Celica's still going to get finished on stream. And it's not like I'm totally abandoning that either. It's just that I'm okay with not finishing it for a while. And that's why we're not working on it today. But I'm going to continue working on that costume on a regular basis. So there will still be plenty of Celica progress streams happening here, you know, regularly. <laughs> but um, at least between now and Anime Expo, I'm going to be focused on things for Anime Expo. And that will be kind of the new model for the time being. Just Call Me Nil is asking, is making things like jackets a lot more complicated or is it all mostly just cutting out shapes and sticking them together? Well, making anything is really comes down to cutting out shapes and sticking them together. Um, but that is a vastly oversimplified version of most builds. So I would not say that jackets are just that easy. All you have to do is slap them together. Um, there's a lot more like nuanced and detailed up, like approaches you have to take to make like the collar sit right and to make everything all of the pieces fit together perfectly like there's some little tricks you can do um, I'm not necessarily an expert and I've never actually made a leather jacket it's just gonna be my very first one but I'm excited about it and I think it will be pretty good <laughs> I'm hoping it will be pretty good anyway and uh, yeah that's the plan
Loverly Liz is asking, when I have time, what games are we playing at the moment? I don't really play that many games, honestly. I play the ones that I'm like currently cosplaying from, um, but like I said, I've been so busy working that I haven't been playing Fire Emblem. So, um, <laughs> I am not like actively playing any games, but if people have, people can talk, share what you guys are currently playing here in the chat. I'm, I'm currently playing, working on leather work nonstop every day. <laughs> All right, those are ready. Ooh, I've got that, that good finger crack. Oh, I guess I can punch holes for the placement of the snaps. Or I can do that later. Next, we gotta make these little guys, and this needs to be bigger. And then the other thing I need to make tonight, if I can get to it, is the like gray piece that goes over the shoulders and like sits on the back, kind of like a backpack. So let's see how far we can get tonight. This also needs like little strappies. <laughs> potion seller tried to use some symbols. Sorry about that, potion seller. I'm sure that you were not spamming us, and yet Nightbot is a fierce defender of the chat room. Sorry for that, <laughs> Nightbot is a pressing potion seller. Maddie's mind says that I am. So precise and have making such everything you make is so precise and has such clean lines. I'm just crazy impressed by the quality of the work you consistently put up. That's so kind of you, Maddie's mind. I try. It's taken me a long time to get to the point where I feel like I am producing like clean work. Uh, <laughs> but I'm doing my best. I'm glad that you think so anyway. All right, I'm gonna basically quick make another pattern so that I can like uh, visualize the distance between all of these pieces and how they're going to interact with each other. Okay, so I'm going to move this. I'm kind of just like moving this piece around to just give it wider margins everywhere. It's not super precise, but I can kind of clean it up a little bit. So we'll just make sure we cut this with a ruler. So yeah, I'm like currently eyeballing things after I just got a nice compliment on how precise I am. I'm just like, well, that's not true. <laughs> And start destroying everything. All right, sorry, I'm, I'm like concentrating on this for just a moment <laughs> so that I can be precise. It's an inch and five eighths to there.
cool. And now I'll just make sure that those holes are punched appropriately too, and we should be good. Okay, let me check back in on things that people were saying while I was had my head down for so long. Everyone's talking about their games that they're currently playing. Uh, Isaac was asking me if I've watched Miraculous Ladybug. I have not, but a lot of people have been cosplaying from that and are seeming to really enjoy that. Oh no, Cactus Wolf says her boyfriend has never played Zelda games. Ugh, oh, you gotta teach him! You gotta teach these boys! Hello, Sonica is here, as well as Tiffany Squirrel just arriving. Hello to both of you guys and welcome. A lot of people enjoying um, Persona 5. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to decide what my final cosplay lineup will be for AX, and I think that I might bring my Persona 5 out again, because that one is a fun costume to wear. I have a Futaba costume. She's pretty comfortable, so I think that one will... There's a good chance of her making an appearance at Anime Expo. Syncrophy also hasn't played any Zelda games. Well, that's fine. We're not actually going to shame you for it, but... I do recommend them. <laughs> Trash. I still want to do some uh, Breath of the Wild cosplay uh, later this summer if I have an opportunity. So maybe after my Attack on Titan uh, needs are met, then I can move on to making something like that. Um, I am cosplaying a couple other Attack on Titan characters. None of them, like right now I'm focusing on Hanji because she's my favorite. I have the most feelings for Hanji, but after that, um, I want to be Emir so that I can do Emir and Krista cosplay with one of my friends. I want to be Annie, because Annie's awesome. I want to be uh, Isabel, ill-fated uh, young friend of Mr. Levi before he joined the, the Survey Corps. And so those are some of my cosplay plans of, that I will do with my Attack on Titan uniform. We'll see. Uh, Potion Seller is asking if I have any plans for Dragon Con, or is it still too far away? Uh, I don't have definite plans. Well, I have one definite plan, which is to wear my Zelda costume <laughs> that I wear freaking everywhere because I worked so hard on it that I have to wear it forever now. Um, so there's that one. I thought I would have a group for Dragon Con, but I think that fell through. Um... Otherwise, I'm not planning on specifically making anything new. It's more just like whatever I have time for. <laughs> I may or may not be moving now, and I may or may not be involved in projects with some other people or companies. I, I don't know. It's all still up in, lim in limbo right now. And so because of that, I haven't committed to any particular lineup for Dragon Con. But I will be there, and I will be having a good time. All right, this still might be on the small side. We're gonna test this out and punch through these holes. No, I'm gonna start. Sorry, I'm like off at the very side of this. The very edge of the frame in my stream, sorry guys. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and punch these two holes and see if they're in the right spot and if I like them. Otherwise I might have to redo really this piece. So I'm just using my punch right on the foam, which I'm sure is not ideal for keeping this edge nice and sharp, but it does work. Um, Link fan says that they're hoping to go to Dragon Con the same year as I go sometime. I hope so too. It'd be nice to meet you. Um, let me know. I've been going every year. But I don't know that I will always go every year forever. Like, maybe someday. I'd like to go to PAX at some point. 
like PAX Prime or West or whatever they call it now. I want to go to that one eventually. Uh, some other people were asking questions. Let me make sure I'm caught up with them. Um, oh, LinkFan was also asking if I've thought of if I accept commissions. I don't do commissions just because of the amount of work that goes into making a custom costume for someone. It's just like it's completely grueling. So I don't do commissions, but I can recommend some really talented seamstresses or just tailors in general. Um, if you're interested in having something commissioned, I can I can let you know who might be able to help you with that. Um, Loverly Liz was asking about ever get worried about a cosplay and the way that they've delayed making something because you want to make it perfect. Yeah, I've done that before for sure, but ultimately you have to just eventually do it if you want it to ever be done. Um, Tiffy the Squirrel is asking me about crossplay and if I would ever consider crossplaying, which would be, you know, cosplaying as a male character. It's something that I've considered for sure. Um, I haven't done it yet. I mean, there's just plenty of female characters that I like and that I'm currently wanting to dress up as. So like, it makes me less compelled to try and be a, to try to make myself look like a dude. This is so like packed in there. That's why it's not cutting or not. Ugh. All right, now watch me dig this out for like 20 minutes. The rest of my stream is just gonna be me trying to pull leather out of this punch. Um, some people are really good at cross playing. I feel like I could do it, but at the same time, I'm less compelled considering that there are already plenty of female characters that I want to cosplay as. Uh, I thought about doing Link. I think Link would be my first like actual crossplay, but I don't know. I have a big girly butt. It's hard for my butt to not look like a girl's butt. I know that sounds really weird, but <laughs> it's what it is. Um, so my my uh, recommendations for seamstresses that you can hire to do your cosplay would be uh, Amazon Mandy, um, who does commissions, who's a friend of mine, who's very talented and a sweet person. I'm just not making any headway with this at all. I also feel like this tool is going to break. But I'm going to still try to dig this out. It's supposed to like collapse within the punch, but that is not happening right now. And I cleaned this out, like this was empty earlier today, so I know that it's not like packed solid or something. Okay, this is working now. I'm starting to like literally peel these out. So yeah, go to Amazon Mandy and ask her. Um, Fluffy Shinigami is asking, saying what I thought that I did cloud. I did like a makeup test for Cloud. Basically, one of my friends did my makeup for Cloud. And it was fine, and I enjoyed doing it and kind of playing around with that and wearing the Cloud wig, but I literally did that in my house and then took it off. Like, I did not go anywhere, no one saw me. I took like a couple of selfies, and that was the extent of it. I was not in a costume, and I was not like interacting with people at all. I was just at home by myself and with my friend. Um, so that was okay, but it, that's not, I don't really count that as cross-playing because it, it wasn't for anything and I didn't do anything with it. It was just, it was just, we got bored and did makeup one night and then it, that was it. Yeah, this is starting to like come unglued, but I am making headway with pulling these out. I need these. Alright, we're slowly getting there. I think it was packed actually really deep in there. <laughs> yeah, I can't quite grab it. Yeah, you would think there'd be an easier way to empty this. There's like, this part does come off. Oh, well, there's some of them that came out. But, there we go. You can push it through, just still not really well if it gets backed up. And that's what happened was that I had way too many that were like all jammed in together and there we go. Now they're all out. 
I told you that I emptied it earlier today, and I did, but all of these guys and a couple more that I just threw down were already in there, so I guess it's my fault that I had already packed it again. <laughs> they look like little caterpillars. It's so very <laughs> true. I'm glad that that was entertaining to some of you. Let's see if I have more success now uh, punching these last holes in my pattern. Oh yeah. So it was plenty sharp enough, it just the foam didn't have anywhere to go. <laughs> Alright, cool. So this is now my new pattern. If you look at the back, it's more, you can see the uninterrupted lines. So it's the exact same thing as this guy, but just barely larger in a way that gives a little bit more margin, like around the edges and between the holes. So that's that. Um, this one is ready to get turned into, or to get traced onto some other leather that I have out here. But I think I'm going to make these little straps real quick first. Here's a piece of a strap that I had already done from a previous project that is not getting used anymore. I'm just gonna cut them extra long. Uh, there's like weird weak spots in the leather you have to kind of watch out for. Okay. Mm. Everyone's talking about linguistics over here. I like look away from the chat. You guys are all scholars now. Just kidding, I'm sure you're all highly intelligent people. All right, so these are some chunks of strap. I'm gonna make them more narrow. Um, this one's like three quarters of an inch. So that seems good, yeah, it'll be three quarters of an inch. Well, this says it should already be three quarters of an inch. Let's see how no, it's quite, it's wider. It's noticeably wider than the other strap. Okay. Well, I hate that this, like, isn't really accurate. But whatever. That's fine. Yeah, this is one of my favorite songs. I'm glad that you enjoy the Tiny Ruler, Indy Hannah Jones. Yeah, this blade is much sharper than the other one I was using. So even though my fingers are close to the edge, I'm being very careful with that and just dragging it slowly and that worked great. Oh, I only cut enough for two. I need two more of these. What am I thinking? That's fine. I was just looking at this leather and wondering if I could find a better, more consistent piece. think this is. All right, come back over here. Casual Viking heading out. See you next time. Thanks for joining us. Okay, everyone's just kind of chilling here in the chat. It's about 8.34. This probably won't be a really long stream. I've been streaming a lot this week, but I'll go for at least, at least until nine, maybe longer. We'll see, depending on how much I get done. Um, it would be great to put dye on these things tonight, but we'll see.
oh, these straps need to be made a little bit more narrow. Hmm. I'm actually gonna cut both sides of this. To give it a more consistent straight edge before I try to trim it down. Frostwolf says, Heidi, help, I'm tired. There's nothing I can do for you, Frostwolf. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, this is Bravely Default Music Remixed by DJ Cutman. It's one of my favorite songs of his. I like to put that song on when I'm driving around running errands because it makes me feel super productive and like I'm going on an adventure. So I highly recommend that to those of you who might have uh, some chores to run out in the world. Definitely A plus, highly recommended. Once again, I'm going to cut both sides because I have no chill. I cut this on a strap cutter, but it was kind of like a, like a smaller like leftover scrap piece and it was not 100% straight and I regret that because I want this to be really nice and precise. But I think this is fine. I'm starting to get the coffee shakes. <laughs> Shouldn't be drinking this so late at night. finger was super close to the edge that time, but we're fine. We're still fine. I did not cut myself. Oof. That one's not cute. I like my ruler slid. Okay, I might just have to recut this on that edge. Yeah, that's fine. This is my last one, so I better not fuck it up. There we go. Yeah, I have a major coffee addiction. I've been trying to drink more tea, because I like tea too. Tea is good. Um, and that way it's like less caffeine and less, like less um, staining my teeth and stuff, but. You know, I enjoy both, but coffee is more effective for being awake, as Diego is saying in the chat. He is very correct. I guess I'm not ready to put this away yet. Okay, so my straps are cut. These guys are cut. Um, and this is the last piece that I have to get. I have to get two of these and kind of prepare them for dye. And once these are ready for dye, then all of these things can get dyed. And I think that would be a really good goal for me for tonight. Um, is to get to that point where there's a dye on everything and that way I can pick it back up tomorrow and it's already ready to go. So, let me grab my other hide that's down here. Got a nice chunk of, what is this? This is the eight to nine ounce, I'm pretty sure. Oh, this says five to seven, but it's very thick. It's very sturdy and it's gonna work. This is what we're gonna use. Loverly Liz is heading out. Good night, Liz. Thanks for joining us. Uh, some teas have caffeine, or really, actually, I guess all of them have at least trace amounts of caffeine, but different teas have different amounts of caffeine. Um, people are talking about that in the chat now.
I'm just gonna trace this with my regular pen so that I don't end up erasing my line as I cut it, which is what happens with the invisible pen. It's very convenient for cutting other things. Alright, there's one. One down. So I'm cutting this out of a thicker leather because I want this little piece itself to be more substantial and uh, have a little bit more shape to it and how like there's like very thin um, sections of this piece that are between all these oblong holes. Uh, using this thicker leather will prevent that from being um, distorted or moved around too much, I'm hoping. We'll see how it goes. I might need to redo this, but it's such a small part of the costume, it's not that big of a concern to me. All right, so we've got our little shapes here. I'm just gonna roughly cut out just so we can get the rest of this chunk of leather out of the way. There we go. Oh, come on. I got it. All right. That bad boy can go back to the floor. Uh, Isaac is asking me what my favorite kind of tea is. I like mint tea as well. That's what they um, said this is their favorite. Uh, yeah, there's a peppermint tea by Harney and Sons. It's really, really tasty. I like that one. Um, I like a lot of different teas though, and I do like teas with caffeine because I, I try to use them to like replace my coffee addiction. So I've, I enjoy a lot of different teas, but that's among my favorites, I would say. Diego's just watching Avatar. Avatar is my favorite. Unless you're talking about the movie, I'm talking about the show. I hope you're watching the show. <laughs> oh, Link fan stays up in Florida to watch us stream. That's so kind of you. <laughs> Pastel Galaxies is asking uh, what tea do I recommend for anxiety? Um, I really enjoy lavender, and lavender is a natural kind of calming herb. I mean, I don't know that it does anything special, but it's just the aroma people find relaxing. So if you um, are suffering for anxi from anxiety, um, lavender can be a good option for a lot of different things. Like, you can get lavender soothing lotion. And I have a lavender tea that's supposed to be like a relaxing tea that I drink at night. So that would be a good one. Um, I don't normally use tea specifically for my anxiety. I mean, let's face it, I'm smoking weed. <laughs> but uh, that's an option. That's also one of my favorite teas that I really like. Okay, Frost Wolf is adjusting chamomile for anxiety, and that's a good one too. Yeah, because chamomile is another like sleepy time tea that you're supposed to take uh, for relaxation. So definitely something that's not caffeinated. I feel like caffeine always exacerbates my anxiety if I'm having a, a rough time. Caffeine is generally not helping at all. Um, but that different people react differently. Some people have like the opposite reaction to caffeine where they find it calming. So I would say that if you are struggling with anxiety, depending on what your reaction is, obviously you need to learn your own body. But if you are, if you have a standard re <laughs> reaction to caffeine where it wakes you up, it's generally not good to have a bunch of that if you're feeling anxious.
Last, oh, Pastel Galaxy says the lavender is not good for them. It makes their throat scratchy. Well, maybe try chamomile then. Um, you know, everyone has different, their own unique reactions to things. So this is just my personal experiences and what has worked for me. Oh no, don't call me Dr. Heidi. I have no qualifications and disclaimer, none of this is like <laughs> guaranteed useful medical advice. Please do not consider me any type of medical professional because that is a not, not factual. But um, I try to keep my statements more generalized to things that can help people find what works for them. I know you're joking, I, and I'm just ragging on you, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, when I was referring to Avatar, I see people talking in the chat still. I, I love the cartoon show and the various iterations. Obviously the movie adaptation of the cartoon show was not good. Uh, in case you didn't know, it was terrible. Um, but I've never actually seen the Avatar James Cameron film where it's like blue people for Ngolian space. Kind of rounding these corners off a little bit. I neglected to buy an actual like round punch. Um, sorry, like a corner punch. That's what I'm talking about. Not like a, a circular hole punch, but like a corner punch that rounds the corner for you. You can get those. I forgot to buy one because um, it was kind of on my list. That's one thing that I don't personally own. That's one tool that I've never used. And so I kind of had it in my mind like, oh, I'll pick up some new tools. And then I didn't buy that much today at Tandy. I, I actually got out of there for less than, it was like $30, less than $30, which almost never happens because I always buy too much stuff at Tandy. Tom Dendoss says that the stream is relaxing. I'm glad to hear that. You're enjoying this. <laughs> Potion seller once helped determining which cereal to eat as a late night snack between the options of Fruity Pebbles or Cocoa Puffs. Um, I'm voting for the Fruity Pebbles because then you have a variety of flavors within that, whereas Cocoa Puffs is only one flavor. So that's my reasoning, but I would love to hear everyone weigh in on this cereal decision for Potion seller. Uh, Chris Dowell says, why not both? That's an awkwardly mixed bowl. I guess I'm gonna make sure these are all 90 degrees as much as possible. Nil just asked me, Heidi, so I looked up how much cosplay commissions usually cost and the information wasn't very helpful. If what you were working on was a commission, how much would you charge for it? 
That's a really tough question, and that's one of the reasons why I don't take commissions, is because that's a very, um, that's a very specific calculation that needs to take into account how many hours I'm spending on the project and how expensive the materials themselves were. So, um, depending on the complexity of the costume, that would affect the price. I would say for a high quality commission, the minimum you would spend would be a few hundred dollars, and that really depends on what your design is. If you want something that's like relatively straightforward, or the uh, the commissioner can make it, uh, you know, based off of a pattern where it's pretty simple to sew and doesn't have like a lot of different colors. I don't know. I mean, it, like, I'm I'm taking I'm making a lot of generalizations. Um, I would say the minimum you would get away with is probably in the three or four hundred dollar range for like a quality costume and it would go up anywhere to multiple thousands of dollars depending on how detailed it is. So like I worked in a shop where when I was an intern at God Save the Queen, those costumes would be potentially up to several thousands of dollars because of the high quality of the materials, the um, you know many hours of labor that goes into it by a lot of specialized artists. Uh, but that is not typical of just anyone out there who's doing commissions. Most people are working um, on a smaller scale, smaller projects, you know, less detailed, less everything has to be the most high quality. Um, and so there is a there is a great range out there. So I know that I'm also giving you really generalized information. Maybe that's not helpful either. But um, it ultimately comes down to what design you want, who's doing the work, and how long it takes them. And um, as long as their time is being fairly compensated, then, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's really how that, that number needs to be calculated. So for a lot of people, that is out of reach. Like, you know, a lot of people don't want to spend, like for Halloween, people are not expecting for the most part to pay hundreds of dollars for their Halloween costume, much less more than that. But it really depends on what you want, who you go to, and you know, what your desires are. So if this particular, I think it was your question, is if this particular project was a commission, how much would I be paying for it? Or how much would I need to be paid for it? Well, it's gonna take me several days of work, and this is skilled labor, this is not like minimum wage here. Um, so if, if I were paying myself like $15 an hour, I don't know, how many streams have I done so far? Um, I'm pretty sure I streamed for like four hours yesterday. I'm pretty sure I streamed for four hours yesterday, and that was the majority of this. Plus, today was probably going to be about six, so it's going to end up being six hours at the end of today. Plus another, I don't know. Basically, multiple eight-hour workdays probably by the time that I'm actually done with this. At a $15 rate, that's going to add up a lot. Plus, I'm working with real leather, which is expensive, and a lot of specialized leather tools. So yeah, I don't have a specific number answer for you right there, but we're at least talking in the range of several hundred dollars. So that's what that is. Oh, Potion Seller says that they had to go with the puffs because there weren't any pebbles. The, the poll was a lie. All of our feedback and all of our input was just worthless in the end because you had to go with the puffs anyway. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Dr. Cantrez used some symbols. Sorry, sorry about Nightbot. Nightbot is aggressively defending the quality of our chat here. So sorry if you used two, uh, symbols. I think that it just hates it if you... Are, are you trying to do like smiley faces or something? I don't know what it is. But there you go. Just Call Me Nil is talking about um, labor fees and he expects them to be higher based on the fact that people who do art commissions frequently charge anywhere that's like up to like maybe $50 for a 20 minute doodle. Um, yeah, it like, you know, people's, people have their, there's different expectations and ranges for different styles of art. Um, it would be amazing if I could be paying myself more than $15 an hour to do a commission, and I am also not actively doing commissions. This is all theoretical, and I use that as an example. But when you consider how many 
dozens up to hundreds of hours would go into a single project and you're asking for $50 an hour for all of those hours of labor, like you're gonna have a really hard time finding a client that is able to support that, um, that you're like that asking rate. So um, certainly $15 an hour is low for a lot of experienced seamstresses. For myself and how slow I am, I feel like maybe that would be a fair place to start uh, at my experience level. But people who are like actually professionals in the industry are often getting paid 25 to $35 an hour, I think is what I've heard people talking about. And that obviously is gonna vary per job, but um, yeah. So hourly rates do go up from there. Um, in my example, I feel like due to the extreme number of hours, it it's hard to ask for honestly a fair hourly wage, uh, hourly wage, hourly wage. That's actually very accurate to my experience. Okay, sorry, I um, missed another comment. Sonica asked me, "How did I get the internship at God Save the Queen?" I applied for it. Um, you have to be a current university student in order to qualify, period. Um, she won't consider anyone who's not actively attending university, and it has to, you have to be studying a relevant field, which could be fashion, it could be theater, something that has to do with sewing, where you're learning sewing and it's, it's valuable to you to learn sewing for your degree. That's pretty much what she wants from an intern, is those things, and then obviously being a good learner, good listener, paying attention, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, individual traits that she would have expectations for. But it's really just as simple as applying, and she does it every single year, and I'm pretty sure she has interns this year, at least one intern, or potentially more. Um, and so that post, in the, in the past she's put it up like around April or May, and I think this year she started taking applications way earlier, like back in like, February. Um, so if you're interested, if you're eligible and you're interested in interning with her, I would keep an eye out on her page, on her public public profiles and things um, in the springtime, and that's when she'll be making announcements about uh, that those opportunities. I'm gonna grab one of my bevelers that I think I put away. I actually put my tool away and now I can't find it. It's so weird. <laughs> Um, I need to scrap too. Okay, uh, just call me Nil saying that these, they are asking so many questions because they know someone went to design school to learn this sort of stuff that's on their mind. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, we can have this discussion. I think it's helpful to people who are here, who are a lot of people in this chat right now are artists who are doing different things. So I think it's healthy to discuss the business side of art because a lot of people don't do it. And then there's a lot of misconceptions or uh, young artists that don't know how to ask for what they're worth. And that's kind of sad because, um, you know, the world doesn't want to pay you what your time is worth for the most part. So I think it can be really beneficial to have these conversations. And a big part of monetizing your art is being confident enough to ask for adequate monetiza money, monetization. I'm like rambling and struggling with words right now, but I think you guys understand me. <laughs> oh, Dr. Cantra says that that was just an ellipsis. If you put too many periods, then uh, Nightbot will get mad. It is very difficult to put a price on art because if a lot of it is abstract. Um, things like materials and things like time you can quantify. Um, you can say this took me so many hours and this took uh, required this much amount of materials. Now, ideally, if you're doing like commissions like of costumes or some sort of like physical art, uh, you want to be upcharging just a little bit on your um, 
on your materials so that you make it worth your time to like, like for instance, when I'm working on a costume, it takes me a while to figure out exactly which materials I need to make a breakdown of that and to make all my decisions for exactly what colors and textures and like that's, there's work involved just in shopping for the costume. So you want to upcharge a little bit by maybe like 20%. Um, or 10, 20 percent, I don't know, depending on how expensive everything is and what their budget is and all of that. But um, to get a little bit more out of it beca because you are putting in the effort to collect all of those things. And also like just your your ideas and your decisions are worth something. You artistically are like, well, I'm going to use this fabric because it has this surface or this finish on it. Um, you know, those are unique choices that people are coming to you Ideally because you know how to make those decisions and so people are paying for your expertise and your taste <laughs> Whale facts is here whale facts. Do you have a whale fact to share? <laughs> Anna's asking for one in the chat. People are talking about artists, paying artists in exposure, the infamous, um, yeah, the infamous, I'll pay you in exposure. You'll get a lot of business from this. Um, my favorite phrase in response to that is exposure is what kills you in the desert. So you can use that one next time someone tries to offer you exposure. Fact is sad. <laughs> now people are requesting an additional whale fact. The whale fact was that beach whales have been found in Germany that are just full of plastic from the polluted oceans, which is very depressing. So sorry everyone, the facts of whales are dark. Okay, wait, we've got another one here to make up from the sad fact. Uh, whale fact number two is um, whales have midwives so that their babies don't drown when the mom is recovering. That's really cute. Whales have specialty jobs within their packs. Uh, or pack. What, what do you call a pack of whales? Uh, a herd? I don't remember. A school. It's not school because they're not fish. Someone. Maybe whale facts can answer that. Thank you, whale facts. Thank you for the whale facts for entertaining us and indulging our requests for whale facts. Oh, a pod, a pod. Okay, yes, definitely a pod of whales. I like the idea of a whale pack, though. <laughs> like they're just roaming like wolves. Dr. Cantress has another interesting fact saying that whales have also been discovered to have individual names that they call each other. That's beautiful. Sometimes I wonder what my cat thinks my name is. He knows his name, and I feel like he knows Jared's name too because I'm always screaming it. A murder of whales, a gaggle of whales, a parliament of whales. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> A squid squad, a glory of whales. Oh my gosh, you guys are killing me. Thank you for turning this into um, a whale discussion. A flock of whales, that's cute too. A business of whales. All right, in case people are curious about what is happening right now in the leatherworking world, I forgot I haven't been updating, I haven't been narrating all of my uh, steps right now. So right now I'm using this beveling tool to kind of shave off at a 45 degree angle this like hard corner on my my fresh cut and it's gonna, it's gonna give us a rounded edge, uh, more or less. You do it on the front and the back, so then you have, 
a bevel that goes all the way around and you're uh, I'll be compressing that after the dye you'll see you'll see <laughs> I don't want to get too far ahead but if this is not your first leather stream then you probably already have a, a decent idea what's going on squid squad that is really cute fly away little whales Okay, so these are ready to go and they need to get their holes punched again, or no, now with the oblong hole punch tool. So after these holes get punched, we're pretty much ready to do the die. That's exciting, right? Oh, Butterscotch Paradox here in the chat has some uh, nice words saying, Sup Heidi, I did my first cosplay as a plague doctor at Casey Comic Con. You and Holly inspired me to do it, so I guess this is thanks. That's awesome, that makes me happy to hear. If you have a photo of your costume, we would love to see it. Um, you'll have to get approved, but uh, we have, um, I think Cactus Wolf is being active in the chat right now. So if you have a photo at the ready, Cactus Wolf can give you permission to post a link and we can all take a look at your costume if you're comfortable with that and you want to do that. But yes, congratulations on your first costume and I'm really happy to hear that um, you were inspired. Oh, this is the little one. I was like, why is this too small? This is the one that I want. Everyone's still talking about whale facts, but I'm not mad. <laughs> a butterscotch paradox does not have a, a, a photo handy. Well, maybe next time. You're always welcome to share it at any point, even if uh, you know it's not for a while until you're ready. But if you have a photo at some point in the in the future that you want to share with us, I would be pleased to see it because uh, that's really exciting. Anytime anybody says that they were inspired to get into cosplay. Okay, here's nothing. That was overkill. I pounded that a little bit too hard, but it works. Oh cool, Frostwolf says that they're an animal caretaker at a museum and their expertise is on snakes. That is badass and I love snakes. I think snakes are adorable. Um, they're under, under underappreciated creatures, that's what I'm trying to say. Snakes and hats especially are really cute. <laughs> I'm going to start shoving these down. I'm going to just keep shoving them down in the hole so that we don't get really backed up like it was before. Okay. I guess I should just be more diligent about cleaning this out in general. Spoopy Sparrow's heading out. Nice to see you here, Spoopy Sparrow. Thanks for dropping by. We'll see you next time. I hope this is symmetrical. Here goes nothing. Did my best. Oh yeah. Yeah, it looks fine. <laughs> Everyone's talking about their early cosplay experiences too.
Now we're getting to snake facts. Snake facts time. Sorry, Frostwolf just said that they get exhausted t uh, always talking about snake facts. And now here we are in the chat demanding more snake facts from you. Um, so, you know, only share if you want to. But if you would grace us with a snake fact, I think we'd be happy. Um, MW Tattoo is asking why I'm soaking the leather. It makes it easier to cut and or punch through. Pretty much a lot of um, processes in leather working are better with water. So I always have a little tray and a little sponge and I just put um, some water on whatever I'm trying to cut or like emboss or any, any kind of stamping or, or tooling you also use water for. So that's what we're doing right here. All right, this is starting to take shape. This is what we are making is one of those. With two of these guys. Hopefully, now this will be quite a bit thicker than the original. But I think it will be fine. It's basically going to be like that. And I'll even it all up and everything before this gets stitched down. That'll be hand stitched all together. Yeah, it's quite a bit thicker, but I can work with it. I can also um, shave down these straps a little bit. I think that'll help a lot. Okay, let me go back to the chat. Everything is moving quickly here. Everyone's getting excited about snakes. We're talking about identifying snakes. Okay. Anna's asking, how is snake skin different than other types of leather? Snake skin is a leather, and have I ever worked with it? I have not worked with snake skin. Um, you can get all kinds of interesting skins from Tandy, like they sell Stingray, and they sell, they do sell, sell snake skin, but a lot of what they sell is also um, other types of leather that have been printed to look like snake skin, because um, everything they, sell is a byproduct of the meat industry so whatever animals get turned into hides for them someone somewhere has eaten <laughs> and you know snakes are i'm sure eaten in some cultures and some dishes i couldn't tell you exactly what but they're not as popular as say burgers and so there's not as many real snakes and also just the fact that they're so small well small comparative to like cattle again <laughs> Snakes can be large, but for the most part, are smaller animals than other things that get turned into leather. Um, so for those reasons, it's more common to find like faux snakeskin leather that is real leather, but it's not actual snakeskin, um, than it is to find actual snakeskin. Yes, Lee Fan, you should watch Attack on Titan Season 2 because it has lots and lots of Hanji in it and no spoilers, but it's very good. Yeah, Stingray looks really awesome. It has this like cool pebbled surface where it's got like tiny little bumps and like just a ton of them. Um, you can look it up for a photo. I don't have any Stingray. I've never had the need to use it, but it looks like a really cool like alien leather kind of thing. I'm like struggling to put the end back on. Frostwolf says, please don't lick snakes. There you have it guys. Snake expert weighing in tonight on our stream to tell you, please do not lick them. I think that's sound snake handling advice. Thank you, Frostwolf. <laughs> All right, punching one more of these guys so that we can move on to die. And I can finally be done for the night. Hello, I 
am new, says Meowzers. Everybody say hey to Meowzers so that Meowzers can make some chat friends. Licking a Nintendo Switch cartridge also sounds like a bad idea. I would recommend generally not licking things. This is a Dr. Heidi uh, approved comment. In general, don't lick inanimate objects. <laughs> MW Tattoo, thanks for following. I know you've been hanging out here today. See you in the chat. I'm gonna put some water on the back. Lollipops are okay to lick, yes. I recommend not licking animals. And uh, I recommend not licking Nintendo Switch cartridges. I'm just gonna hammer the crap out of this until it cuts, and there it goes. Alright, two more to do, and I can stop making a ton of noise on this stream. I'm sorry, everyone. Home Skillet Sam, hello, welcome to the stream. Alright, last loud punch. <laughs> it's been a weird night in the chat, that's right. I've been having a good time though. This has been an especially fun conversation, I think. But yeah, we've gotten into some interesting topics. Era of Solar, hello! Also, uh, Aethys Kodan is back. We've been talking about snake facts and whale facts. That's been the um, majority of tonight's conversation. All right, so these are pretty much ready to go. I just got these two um, cut out and punched and beveled. And so they are joining the ranks of our other leather items here that are ready to be dyed. And I'm pretty sure that's gonna be it for me for tonight, for right now. Oh, I actually have extra, I have an extra strap. Well, that's fine, I'll dye them all and then have an extra one that's ready to go. <laughs> Aerosolar says, the only snake fact I have is that they're much smaller than whales usually. Yes, that is, thank you, it's good, it's really good. All right, I'm gonna set a little bit of this stuff aside and then um, kind of rearrange our work area just a tad so that we have a clean surface. Let me do that real quick. And all of these straps are going to go away. Say goodbye to our harness straps we prepared in yesterday's stream. And then in Saturday's stream, these will all become an actual uh, thing, I hope. <laughs> an actual harness that can be worn on the body by a human. Okay. So I'm just gonna drag this paper down towards me and my like whole laptop and uh, <laughs> um, mic and everything are just kind of sitting on here. So hopefully this won't be a disaster. Here's my crappy tool and I'm super disappointed in I'm gonna try to return. Finally throwing away my dried out pens because I bought two new ones after all this time. 
we finally have sufficient invisible ink in our leather stream. Okay, so yeah, I guess my I guess my camera's coming with me. <laughs> I'll back this up again. Okay, so now we've got a little bit more covered workspace here, which is about to become dying space. So this is what we have. We have four of these thigh pieces. And then we have four of these like side pouch pieces. Make them look nice and even. We should have 10 of these belt loops. some straps here. Uh, oh, this one is the one that's not evenly cut. Okay. Well, that was pretty easy to determine. Cool. Yeah, I'm just going to discard that one. So all of these things need to be dyed. I have a glove. <laughs> my other one, I'm just going to reuse these other gloves. Let me grab my glove. I'm going to walk away from the screen for a second. Still here. All right, I'm back, I'm back. Let me check back in on what's going on over here. Still talking about snakes, still talking about whales. Butterscotch Paradox asking about the song. Uh, let me pull it up. This is Mountain Range by DJ Cutman. <laughs> All right, still the animal facts. That's fine, you guys are entertaining me tonight. All right, um, we are gonna be using the same dye as we had before. This is Bison Brown, and this is the EcoFlow dye. This is non-toxic stuff, but I always like to wear gloves so that I don't uh, dye my fingertips. And what else do we need? We need a dauber. So these are the wool daubers that I like to use. You can just use pieces of wool. You could actually use like cotton and stuff too, but the wool is really nice because it, um, the, it does not really absorb a lot of the dye itself, so you don't lose a lot in the process. I'm just going to shake this a little bit. All right. This is all shaken up and ready to go. This should be relatively fast tonight because I don't have a ton of little detailed spots to do. Now I do have like weird foamy bubbles from um, shaking that up. So that'll take a minute probably to settle. And once again, I'm gonna be getting the edges with edge coat, which is the stuff that I used in my last stream last night. So I'm not too, I'm not doing that right now. And I'm not worried about getting the sides of the pieces right now because of that. So just FYI, I have a plan. Um, I'm not just ignoring it, but for tonight and for today, I don't need to be worried about dyeing the edges of these pieces. These little belt loops, well, they're called belt keepers technically, and these do need to have the edges done. Um, you buy them pre-made from Tandy. They're like a dollar a piece, which is honestly probably a huge rip off but it saves you the trouble of making them yourself. Well, still the animal talk here in the chat. This has been an entertaining conversation. Uh, Butterscotch Paradox is asking, do I have a stream schedule? Yes. Um, if you look in my description box, there's that image of Celica 
I guess I should update that if I'm not going to be actively working on Celica every time. But anyway, um, my streams are regularly on Wednesday evenings and Saturday afternoons. And I also always do a Thursday stream, but I don't always start at the same time. So um, today is the Thursday stream that started, it was a little bit more of an evening stream, but sometimes it's an afternoon stream. So I need to make sure that's updated. Thank you for reminding me. Um, and everyone knows what time our regular start times are. But Wednesdays and Saturdays are the set times. And I think Thursday is gonna probably eventually turn into a set time as well. Today I was just being lazy. <laughs> So you just kind of rub this dye on like a stain and it just soaks in. And then after it all um, kind of sets up, you would want to go back and buff your pieces a little bit in case there's any excess dye that did not get soaked into the piece that's like sitting on top. It gives you kind of like a, like a weird chalky texture. So you remove that extra substance. Um, you can use a soft cloth or a paper towel and just like buff the pieces and rub the surface and that's all it takes. Um, and then you would want to seal it with something. So there's a lot of different options for that and we've done a number of them here on stream but for these pieces I think that I'm going to use that tan coat as well to give a nice like uh, waterproof, I think it's waterproof, I was told it was waterproof, I haven't used it before but uh, fingers crossed that it lives up to my expectations. Uh, Aerosolar is asking if do I do one more than one coat? Yes. Uh, on the straps that I had that I was working on from Wednesday, I did like two or three coats. And at first, I tried just like applying two coats back to back, and I didn't get that much of a darker uh, result from that. And then I let it soak up for several hours and went back and did a, a final third coat, and I got a much darker uh, result that time. So I think that it just needs to have the time to soak in and then you can go back and put more on. And you can continue to darken the leather until it just won't absorb anymore. Uh, Sonica is asking me why am I not dyeing the inside? I'm not dyeing the inside because I don't need to. It's not going to be visible. Um, these slide along the belts. They're little belt buckles, or not belt buckles, belt loops basically. Um, but. They look like, you can see the inside of them right now, but, but when the time it's all assembled, you won't be able to see the inside at all. So. There's just no need. Now, on this piece, I'm also not gonna dye the back. It's possible that some dye will kind of end up working its way onto the back side because of, um, you know, just how runny it is, but I'm, not going to be dyeing the undersides of these pieces because, yeah, see it's kind of soaking in a little bit, but that's fine. It's not going to be a solid color on the back. Um, the reason for that is that there, this is all being worn on the outside of white clothing. And so if I don't seal these well enough, um, well if I don't seal them at all, and a lot of the, a lot of the top coats that come for leather are not actually waterproof or like they're not true sealers. Anyway. Um, then I will end up getting colored transfer, the rubbing off of the leather and onto the white pants and staining them. So for that reason, I generally don't put any dye on any undersides or backsides unless they're going to be visible. And they're almost never visible. So that's my general rule of thumb. But yeah, this leather is much... Um, it's soaking up a lot more color like you can see the difference between how dark this got versus these little straps here these are like way lighter looking um, I'm gonna give these another go but part of the the difference there is just has to do with the the hide itself so like these are two different animals they came from because they're cut into different thicknesses so they have individual variations um, among the pieces and among the, the hides they're not all the same. There's a little bit of a range. Uh, Butterscotch is asking me what con this is for. This is for Anime Expo, which is happening like next week, almost. 
Oh, I guess I was gonna sand those. Well, not happening now. <laughs> So I'm making two sets of these, one to be worn by me and one to be worn by my husband, Jared, so that we can match. And then after that, I'll end up with an extra set, because he's not going to cosplay with me all the time. But I'll, at that point, I'll have two sets of matching gear so that I can loan one out to like a number of friends that I have plans with so that we can take like uh, smaller photo sets where we both match and we're clearly wearing uniforms that look like they belong together. Because when you all like make your own costumes and they're supposed to be identical, there's always going to be like some variations in color or texture or whatever. So I thought it would be useful for me to have two full sets of my own that are like 100% uh, matching. Oh, I'm getting like hair in my face. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Everyone's talking about snake oil salesmen and like crazy, weird um, chemicals that you end up with. Oh, my itchy nose. Link fan is saying that even if he doesn't go to Dragon Con this year, I'll most likely be at Dragon Con next year. Well, that'll be awesome. Um, I hope that that is that you have the opportunity to go to Dragon Con. Dragon Con is one of my favorite events, and I like to go every year if I have the opportunity. So I will definitely be there this year. I will hopefully be there next year. But I also want to open myself up to doing other events, um, so we'll see how it plays out. <laughs> but I do like my Dragon Con. Tiffany Squirrel says this looks like a cake pop. You're not wrong. It is similar to a cake pop. It's similar looking to a cake pop. Uh, it is made out of a chunk of lamb skin with hair still attached. So this is literally sheep's wool, but it's instead of being sheared off the sheep, um, it's it's the whole skin. <laughs> Potion seller says every time Heidi looks at the chat, we're wilding out. That is so true for tonight's stream. You guys have been just like on your own, <laughs> like. Rolling with the conversation. I love it. This is funny to me. So you guys have been very wildly entertaining tonight. So thank you <laughs> It's been a long day of snake facts for frost wolf. I believe it. Once again, I'm not too worried about getting the edges here because these will have the edge coat on them to match the straps, but I do want a solid um, color all over as well as down in the um, kind of interior areas that have been cut out. So I am worried about those edges, I'm trying to get them to all be solid, but it's going pretty easy. The dyeing process is very simple, it's very straightforward, you just gotta sometimes work it a little bit to make sure the color absorbs kind of evenly because it does its own thing. It's one of the reasons I love working with leather is you get all these like weird little organic variations like um, in the way that it absorbs it kind of reveals different natural characteristics of the leather. I'm just gonna go back into this little spot. And it doesn't all look uniform in the end unlike a paint they would all be like identical looking or like a, an opaque surface. Yes, leather dye does stain human skin really easily, um, and so it's hard, to, like, it'll fade over the course of a couple of days if you're, like, washing your hands regularly and stuff, but it's still just annoying, so I try to always have my gloves ready whenever I'm using any dyes. And it goes for fabric dye as well. <laughs> Uh, just Call Me Nil is asking if I play Magic the Gathering. I do not play Magic the Gathering. Jared has always had like a solid group of bros, like his best friends. Not like bros, bros, like his bros that he plays with. And so I've never felt like I 
Oh, well, that's not even like that. I haven't been that interested in it, to be honest, which is fine. Um, so, uh, there hasn't been, like, a need for me to play with him, because he always has people to play with. That's all I'm saying, is that he has plenty of opportunities to play with other people, and he does a lot. So, with that in mind, I do not feel, like, the need to supply that for him, I guess is all I'm saying. <laughs> Cactus Wolf says that this is a way better method of dyeing than what she does, which is to dunk a rag in the dye and slop it all over the leather. Yeah, that would, you know... <clears throat> have its drawbacks, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Link fan is asking if I play Dungeons and Dragons. I do play Dungeons and Dragons. That one is really fun. Um, I'm only in Holly's game right now. That's the first like real game I've ever participated in is the one that Holly is dungeon DMing for us um, And that's not an online game. It's just like us privately hanging out together kind of deal uh, But Jared is in that game not as his regular character Dieth, but as a side another one of his like long-standing characters is a barbarian named Wright and Wright is really strong and really stupid so he's kind of the opposite of uh, Jared or Dieth in a lot of ways, because Dieth is more of, has, Dieth is not just straight up self-insert necessarily, but certainly shares a lot of characteristics with Jared, which I think is what a lot of us aim for in our D&D character. Not everybody, but you know what I mean. Um, so Dieth is more true to who Jared is as a person, even though it's not an, an actual representation of him. And then Wright is someone who's not Jared at all. And so that's kind of fun. He has an opportunity to be somebody different and play in a different style. But he is also kind of like holding back because he's obviously a very experienced player and most of the people in the group are not. Like, like for me it's my first time and for other people, a number of them, it's their first time. So Jared is kind of like in a helper role. Um, you know, Holly's a very capable DM, but Jared knows a lot of the rules and stuff and just has like handy information memorized. So he's like, he's more like helping out with the group than necessarily like trying to participate fully. So I thought that was nice of him. I know I might be missing some comments. If you guys are have, have questions directly for me, uh, don't forget to use my name in the comment. That'll help me to make sure that I don't miss it. Um, cause it's easier to read those, so just FYI, if I, if you're ever trying to like get my attention and I don't see you, use my name and that'll help. All right, two more of these things, and then we'll call it a night. Which, what time is it? It's 9.37? Okay, I've been streaming for a decent amount of time. Everyone's having different D&D discussions now. The characters they've played and the games they've been a part of. It's so interesting how every D&D experience is just wildly different like they've created a framework by which you can like you operate within that obviously but also beyond that it's like extremely unique every time because people have different play styles and different storylines and things that are happening totally different characters I just think it's fascinating how like D&D is a genre almost but it's not it's not only ever one thing Uh, Butterscotch Paradox is asking who else is in Holly's game. It's a revolving cast. Um, it's hard to get everyone together. Uh, currently, or in the games I've played, it's been Jared, um, Holly and Ross, myself, obviously, um, Susie and Aaron come, but not all the time necessarily, because they both have a lot going on. Barry, um, 
Chris O'Neill just joined us last time for a very interesting game. So like those people mostly. Um, and then a couple of other people who are not like internet people but that are friends with Holly or that we know. Um, they met down, I think in like a little Tokyo. Anyway, some really nice people who are just like not necessarily known on the internet. They're just like cool, chill people. All right, last one, we're almost done here. All right, so we've only got a few minutes left in the stream because I'm probably gonna wrap up pretty quickly as soon as I'm done with this die. So if anybody has any remaining questions about anything that we've talked about tonight, including the leather work or hell, the whale facts. Um, if anybody has any additional comments, make them now because we'll probably be calling it quits within the next couple of minutes. Oh, hi, Luis just got here, I think. Sorry that we're ending very, very soon, but it's been a couple hours tonight that we've been streaming. And we'll be back on Saturday with more harness progress. Um, Clockwork Piece is asking about, uh, have I thought about getting a tiny can, a can of shoe polish to treat the non-suede sides against water damage? Um, well, shoe polish is obviously like a, a coating. It is a colored coating most of the time. And they, like, yes, I could use shoe polish, but there are lots and lots of leather products with or without pigment that are designed to do exactly that. So I have a couple different options, like the edge, not edge coat, the tan coat that I was using. And there's like some mink oil that I got to try out that this does waterproof it. So there are options there. I haven't particularly, like specifically used shoe polish, but I'm sure that would work um, if you're fine with that color happening. Uh, thank you, Link Fan, who's being a smart ass and by posting additional comments, just the words additional comments. Uh, neutral is clear, says so Clockwork Piece. Okay, yeah, so I guess the neutral um, shoe polish would work fine. So yeah, that's definitely an option, but I haven't done that specifically. Uh, thank you, Aerosolar, for dropping by. Uh, and everybody else, too. Meowzers, thanks for joining us. Meowzers said they were new this time. It's always nice to see new faces or new screen names, I guess. Have I ever thought about making a guest appearance in Jared's streams? I mean, maybe. I don't want to, like, like, we're kind of doing our own thing. He was helping me on my stream yesterday because I literally needed a second pair of hands. Um, but, yeah, uh, we've talked about, like, playing things together at different points. Maybe we'll do that again sometime, but not right now. <laughs> All right, well, I think that with that, I'm going to call it a night. Um, we've got everything set up here, so these will be absorbing the last bits of color kind of overnight. I'll take another look at them in the morning and decide whether or not I want to add another coat. If I do add another coat, I'll probably just do that off camera so that I don't have to spend more time waiting for it to dry afterward anyway. You'll, you'll find out um, how much progress I end up doing, but I'm going to try to save the majority of the work for Saturday's stream. So, um, Saturday at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific time is going to be the next stream, and hope you guys can make it, and if not, then there's always archives. Thank you guys for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Good night! <laughs>